Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So we have two payments going out this week for beneficiaries of Social Security, one of which already came out on yesterday. And then we had the second payment that is going to be arriving tomorrow. So we're gonna be going over both of those payments and who can expect to receive them. Plus, Mitch McConnell has finally announced that he's going to be stepping down as the leader of the Republican Party in the Senate. So we'll be covering that news as well. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $9,000 in free stocks or $9,000 in free cash in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Webull. All you have to do is once you click on that link is just sign up for a free account and then deposit at least one penny. At that point, Webull will be sending you at least three free stocks worth all the way up to $9,000. And if you'd really just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive those stocks, it's just sell them for what they're worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so diving right into our lead story of today's video, and that involves Mitch McConnell finally calling it quits for the Republican Party as the leader in the Senate. He's saying that no longer is he wanting to be the Senate Majority Leader. So according to The Hill, Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell is stepping down from his leadership post in November, ending his history-setting tenure as the longest-serving Senate Party Leader. McConnell, who turned 82 this month, announced the decision in a speech on the Senate floor. He said, quote, One of life's most underappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next chapter. So I stand before you today to say that this will be my last term as Republican leader of the Senate, as he announced on the Senate floor shortly after the noon afternoon on Wednesday, catching many of his colleagues by surprise. McConnell said he plans to serve out the remainder of his term, which ends in January of 2027, and will continue to work hard leading his conference through this year's election. He said, quote, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I will complete my job my colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November and they take the helm next January, he said. So even though he is going to be stepping down as the, as the leader of the Republican Party, whether that's the minority leader or the, or the majority leader, depending whether Republicans have uh, the majority in the Senate or the minority in the Senate, he is no longer going to be their leader. He's still going to be in the Senate, but he's going to let someone else take charge, whether that be John Thune, John Barrasso, uh, Rick Scott. You know, really depends who they end up leading. More than is it going to be someone that uh, perhaps maybe Donald Trump's picks to be the leader, or is it going to be someone who is maybe kind of more of an anti Trump or who ends up uh, taking the helm? as the new leader of the Republican Party in the Senate. Now, in some other news, of course, this week for Social Security beneficiaries, there were actually two payments going out, one of which actually went out yesterday on Wednesday to retirees, as well as those on SSDI. And the next one is actually going to be going out tomorrow on Friday. So according to Newsweek, Americans get two Social Security payments this week. So Americans are set to earn two Social Security payments this week due to specific rules around retirement and disability payments. Typically, the Social Security Administration only sends out one set of payments each week to beneficiaries based on their birthdays, but this week marks a rare occasion in which some recipients will earn payments based on both retirement and disability benefits. Meanwhile, those born between the 11th and 20th saw benefits come out on February 21st, that was last Wednesday, the third Wednesday of the month, and then finally those born between, born in the remaining days of any month will see payments today on February 28th. Of course, that was yesterday. So if you were born between the 21st and the 31st of any given month, you would have received your payment yesterday on Wednesday. Meanwhile, there's even more money coming out to Social Security recipients because of March payments at the end of this week. Those who earn both Social Security and SSI benefits will see their money for SSI on March 1st and Social Security checks on March 3rd. So if you do receive SSI or if you started receiving Social Security uh, benefits before May of 1997, you will be receiving your payment tomorrow on Friday. So again, payments yesterday on Wednesday and then the second payment this week, tomorrow, 
on Friday. Now, in some other news, we have a big, big, big announcement by the Supreme Court who is expected to hear Trump's immunity claim in the Supreme Court at some point in the near future. So, according to The Hill, Supreme Court agrees to weigh Trump's criminal immunity in historic case. So, the Supreme Court on Wednesday agreed to take up the issue of whether former President Trump can be criminally prosecuted for his efforts to overturn his 2020 re-election loss, setting up a historic case that tests the limits of presidential immunity. The justice's order keeps Trump's January 6th criminal trial proceedings on hold for now, handing an initial blow to special counsel Jack Smith, but keeping alive a pathway for his prosecution to reach a jury before the 2024 presidential election. The high orders court establishes an expedited schedule, setting up oral arguments during the week of April 22nd and likely enabling the landmark decision to be handed down by the end of June or sooner. If the conservative majority court ultimately sides against Trump, as many legal observers expect, it would then allow Smith's prosecution to move forward, providing Trump's judge with a window to still schedule the trial before November's election. Trump reacted to the news on True Social, writing that the legal scholars are extremely thankful for the Supreme Court's decision to hear the case. He said, quote, without presidential immunity, a president will not be able to properly function or make decisions in the best interest of the United States of America. Presidents will always be concerned and even paralyzed by the prospect of wrongful prosecution and retaliation after they leave office. This could actually lead to the extortion and blackmail of a president. So let me know in the, your thoughts and comments below. Do you think that this, do you think or do you believe that the Supreme Court should rule that a president cannot be prosecuted or at least in this case? Then of course, in a, I, I think this is probably going to be a case where uh, Trump is perhaps very thankful that he actually pointed three of the justices in the Supreme Court. So are they going to um, I mean, they're not necessarily supposed to be, I guess, loyal for who appoints them, but it could definitely factor in because someone who Trump appoints obviously is going to be more conservative, more uh, likely to vote in favor of Trump here. So whether or not that actually helps Trump out in this case, who really knows? But just an update on the polling here. We can look at the 2024 uh, general election according to Real Clear Politics. And whenever you throw all these other candidates in there, with Trump and Biden, if we throw uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., as well as Jill Stein and Cornell West, we get a Trump victory by an average of three points. And in some polls, Ashley's high as eight points. That's just this Harvard-Harris poll right here. So you can see, once again, on average, Trump leads by three points. But again, this is just polling. It can certainly be wrong. And the, the real polling that we have to look at is in those key swing states, such as Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Nevada, and perhaps even Georgia. Who's going to win those states? That's really what's going to matter the most. But again, let me know your thoughts and comments below and everything that we spoke about in today's video. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.